Welcome to our third community member spotlight and in this episode we bring in Apocalypse who is our Xbox community admin. So many of you recommended Apocalypse over the last few months for one of these so I'm glad to finally get her in. I hope you enjoy this one. Member spotlight number three, our member spotlight for March. Welcome Apocalypse, you have been recommended every single month since we started this member spotlight. So for is only right that we got you in. So many people recommending you, a huge part of the community. So we want to get to learn more about you today. And they've got a list of questions. And we're going to start with, so when, well, our community, which we're all a part of. When, when did you find, well, sorry, when did you join our community? And what made you join us? Um... So I joined, I think it was about 18 months ago. I, it's a bit of a sad story, but I actually got kicked out of my last class. Um, I think it had partly to do with the fact that I was a female gamer and wasn't quite giving them what they wanted from a female. So I think they just were like, get rid of you. Um, and then I was kind of searching for another place. And um, I was watching one of your videos and I was like, oh, I'm going to go try this Discord. And um, yeah, so I joined it. I was on 99 horse runs at that point. And I just wanted somewhere to do my 100th one. I didn't really trust the LFGs on Xbox. I had a few bad experiences there. And um, yeah, when I jumped into the Discord, I really liked it. So I kind of hung around. Oh, and how many iron horses are you on now? Um, I think it's 966, I think. <laughs> <Do it>. I think. <laughs> 18 months and 800 raid late, 800 raids late, I'm still here, so oh. it must be doing something right. It's incredible. <laughs> it really is incredible. So, next question. So, so many people have great things to say about you, like I said. You're, you're a huge part of the community. Uh, even if you haven't met you, they know about you. Um, so you've become a hugely valuable member of the server, which shows of your admin status. Can you tell us about your journey from the beginning, where you first became a member with us, all the way to now as admin? Well, what's your community journey? So, um, like I said, when I joined, it was not the best of times, so I was super nervous. Mm. Um, I'd been with a group, and they never really made me feel like I knew what I was doing. So even though I was at 99 Iron Horse Raids at the time, plus all the ones that, you know, don't kind of come to completion, um, I was very not unconfident, not confident about um, myself as a raider. So I came to this Discord and uh, it took me a few days to kind of suck up the courage and go, I'm going to do this. And I, I jumped into a raid on the LFG, um, Xbox LFG, and in that, raid, in that first raid, I was like, oh my gosh, I know so much more than I thought I did and was led to believe I did. And I think I actually ended up leading that raid and kind of taking over just because the, um, the people in there were still pretty new and didn't quite know everything that needed to be happening in the raid. So um, yeah, that, that was my first experience of doing the raid and the Discord. Um, and then... From there, I kind of developed as as a raider. I continued leading raids, and I, I had a bit of a reputation for a bit of time where um, this sounds terrible because it sounds like I have a big head, but I used to kind of come in and save a lot of raids. Mm. Um, so people would post for one because they'd been stuck on William for hours, and I would come in and kind of get everyone through. So um, that's kind of where my reputation started. And I was originally in the, um, I think it was Rogue X Killers, yeah. um, their sub clan. But I actually left and helped a friend with their clan for a little bit. And then um, one day you actually posted looking for people in the, in the Xbox LFG. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll give this a go. And I joined your raid. And then from there, you told everybody that they needed to do, I think it was TCT back then. Mm -hmm. I needed to do that TCT test and they took me on that. Um, that was probably one of the most nerve wracking raids I'd ever done. So you went through the TCT I'd test? I'd never done. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. I had to do it. I did, yeah. <laughs> okay. I had to do, um, it was a, um, yeah, it was with Ironsides and Will and mm. all of them. And we got into the raid 
and they had open doors and I'd never done open doors. I didn't even know that was a thing in Iron Horse at that time. And I was like, in my head, I was going, oh my God, what's going on? I don't even have no idea. Um, but we managed to get through and obviously I, I got that TCT role and mm. we went on from there. And then I slowly started rating more and because I could ping for myself, I was just running my own raids. I'll just call for seven people. And that's kind of how I met J-Dub. And I started raiding a lot with him um, and Dub in Kentucky and a few of the other people there as well. And slowly over time, every time I raided with J-Dub, he was like, Apocalypse, you should join Joker Gang. And he would do that every single raid. He'd be like, oh, it'd be so good if you were in Joker Gang. And so eventually he wore me down. And I was like, okay, let's do this. I'll come and join Joker Gang. And I joined them. And that's what got me back into TSW. Yeah. And then I was an LP there for a while. And one day Jada was like, what do you want to do? Like, do you want to, what do you want from the Discord? Do you want to be promoted or anything like that? And I'm not really the pers- the type of person that goes, I want to, I want to be a moderator and I want to do this and I want to do that. I kind of just want people to be, oh, we see you doing all these amazing things. We think that this is what you should do. Mm. But J-Dub was like, no, tell me what you want and we'll, we'll work on it. So I, I eventually told him I'd like to be a moderator. And next thing I know, Rick, Rick Starr was getting in touch with me mm-hmm. and he was asking me if I wanted to be a moderator. And I was like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. And then he goes, oh, and another thing, would you like to be the new clan commander of Honey Badgers? And I was like, oh, okay, why not? we give it all a go. Um, so I kind of took over and then, I feel like with Honey Badgers, I kind of brought fresh life into the clan. Yeah. It was very quiet when I kind of took over and slowly but surely we got people talking again, um, which was a lot of work. Um, just because people, you know, there's a lot of people that like to play by themselves and so we had to draw people out of their shells. And, um, I bought, I promoted Nono, who was in there at the time. Nono's a robo. Yeah. Um, so he became an LT. Um, and then I asked Boney Crescent to come and join us as well. And he came as another LP. And um, we had a lot of fun together. Like, um, one of the things we did was like an XB battle. So I took on the whole clan and had to beat them. And then um, I challenged Boney and Nono to take on each other. And that week, I don't think I've ever seen two people earn that much XB. They just, they went really hard. And on the Tuesday before reset, they go, hey, APOC, do you, do you want to join the battle? And I was like, yeah, sure. In two days, I'll catch up to you guys. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, we, we had a lot of fun together. Um, I've obviously, now that I'm an admin, I, I made the decision to step aside and Boney's taken over as clan commander for Honey Badgers. Um, not because I don't love Honey Badgers. I'm still an LT there. But, you know, it kind of comes a time where I was the next generation to kind of step up. Yeah. So I just, I stood aside and have um, just supporting him and letting him shine and take over that role. Um, so that was my journey to moderator and to client commander. Yeah. And then Mike approached me and asked me if I wanted to be the Xbox shade manager. And obviously I said yes to that. Um, and I, I'd never met Mike before and I got to know him really well and he's really amazing. Um, he was really yeah. good mm. and for myself as well. He was so supportive of all my ideas and he, all he wanted was for, you know, the Shade Academy to be this positive space for people to to just raid and help each other. So it was really um, fun doing that and I took over and we only had one Xbox team at that point um, we had no active mentors working with teams and doing projects. So I kind of took over and it was like, I looked at it and I, it was a big job. Um, but I spoke to Codfather and convinced him to come and be a mentor. And then Reap, he came and joined as well. And we started getting more teams going. And it, like, it kind of all just snowballed from there. Um, I personally mentored like two of the six teams we currently have. So... For me, it's it's always nice to see them, you know, sticking together and yeah, still out there. I think Rob he raided with you and his that, that team that was the team yeah, I mentored. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that was quite special for me. 
and I'm currently reading, I'm not, not reading, I'm currently mentoring the Ghost of Wyvern team. Um, so I, I was, I, was, I think I, did, I, I played a big part in getting the Xbox side up and running. And then I passed it on to Reap when I stepped into the um, admin role because a radio came to me and said, how would you feel about taking on the Xbox platform admin? And I was like, sure. Um, it was hard to say goodbye to Shade Academy. And even though I'm still a mentor, it was like, it's like my little baby yeah. because I, I put so much into it. Um, so, yeah, I, that's kind of how my journey went. Um, lots of hard work. Mm. Um, but I think the reason, like, the reason people know me is because I, I did so many people's FTCs. And so, you know, they've thrown into Raiders and then they talk about their first time when they're taking FTCs through. And so my name just comes up for a lot of people. So, yeah. That thinks a bit more than that because, like, people don't see what goes on behind the scenes. Like, even myself, like, I know you're a huge figure in our community, but all that you just explained then, you've done so much, you've worked so hard, and what that does, that'll, like, touch people as well. So all those different people you mentioned and work with, there's then voice of mouth from them because they'll have so much, like, praise for you when you speak to others, and and rightfully so, and that's how your name gets about Apocalypse because you just work so hard for this community, and... It's why, why you're in the position you're in now. So thank you. Like, it's incredible what, what you've done for the community and keep on doing it. Yeah, thank you. You know, and, 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 that. and that's why, you know, you, you touch so many people and, yeah, the, the word spreads and, you, yeah, just thank you. A few other things there, just going off script. So first yeah. of all, um, oh, I had two things in my mind, but one's dropped out. So t- touch on the first one. You mentioned it twice. So in your last clan, you struggled to... You said you struggled to make an impact or get involved because you're female, you felt? And what was happening there? Yeah. Were they just not listen to you? Was your views just uh, not counted? Or? I think it was just like, because uh, I started as an FT, like I did my first raid with them, and I don't think they ever took me seriously. And then there was lots of like, uh, it's, it's hard to explain. Like uh, other female gamers, they understand, like you go into a raid with males, that don't know you or males that expect you to, you know, be all flirty and stuff like that. And I'm not like that. I'm just, I'm there to raid because I love raiding mm. and I don't really play into that whole side of things. And um, I think a lot of people, not, not all. And I mean, I, I raid with amazing people now and I, ha- I don't have that problem anymore. Mm. Um but also at that point I was new, like I, I hardly ever used to get in parties with people and um, you don't know how to stand up for yourself until you've practiced it a bit. So yeah, it was, it was, I look on it now and if I was to go back, I, they taught me so much. I love those guys. They taught me so much, but I think I would have dealt I would have handled myself differently around them if I could go back now yeah. and just be more assertive and more confident in myself. Yeah. Definitely. It, yeah. It's a hard world for female gamers out there. Thank you. So many stories. Speak to Penny yeah. about it all the time. And one of our things for this community was making sure that this was an easier place for all people, you know, but also definitely female gamers because, yeah. yeah. So it's good to hear that this, you know, you, you've become more confident and you've got, yeah, you've not had those problems. and. One day, hopefully, yeah. you know, <laughs> people can just be even. It's not an issue. Um, so moving yeah. on and continuing on then. So regarding the admin role, we know how you got there. You've through a lot of hard work, obviously. You've given so much. But would you be able to give people an insight as to what that role entails? You know, what do you do as admin for the community now? Yeah, so um, obviously my role specifically Xbox platform platform admin but I'm always open and I'm there for whoever in the community needs help um, so some of the things I do is keeping up to date with what's happening on Xbox, Xbox and um, I don't even I don't even just do it in this community I make sure I'm out there on actual Xbox talking to other people and just keeping up to date with everything that's going on so that I can bring that back and share with people here um, so we have we have like a really good team of 
plan commanders and LTs, and that's across all platforms, I, I believe. Mm. And they keep things running pretty smoothly in the clans, but sometimes things do pop up from time to time that I, I help them with. So, for example, you know, like there was one issue where for some reason someone's um, raid post for their clan kept getting deleted, so I looked into that and helped them with that. Um, sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, Discord decided to be a bit of a teenager and mm-hmm. not work how it should and their posts where they can't ping for things and things like that. So they'll come to me and ask me um, for help with that. Um, I also sometimes have CCs that come to me or plan commanders that come to me um, who aren't sure who to um, approach for being an LT for their clan. Maybe they've just got a really quiet clan or nobody's really interested in taking on that role. So they'll come to me and I, I keep a bit of a list of who's interested in stepping up um, for promotion. And it's actually a, one of the hard parts of the job um, is when you have to promote someone like to a, a clan commander p- position and you know you're, you're hurting other people because they really yeah. want it as well. And there's so much thought that goes behind who is picked for those positions. So like when I think about it, I'm always thinking about, you know, how do the, how are they helpful in the community? Um, are they role models? Um, are they going? Are they good communicators? Are they actually actively playing the game? Because there's no point being the clan commander or a new clan commander if you're not actually playing division. Oh, um, so you know, there's lots of things I have to think about, and it's really hard to to make that decision knowing that you're hurting other people, but part of the job so it has to happen unfortunately it um does. there's so many instances, there's not a lot so of PCA positions it's hard like there's been instances before where you've picked people and people have left the community because they felt they were more deserving and stuff like that it's a real thing isn't yeah. it and it's a lot of pressure it, it really is mm. <laughs> and you feel so guilty because it's not any reflection on the other person no. just in that moment the person that's the person that is going to be the best fit so yeah um, other things I do is like keeping keeping an eye on what's happening in the LFG channels. Um, uh, I pretty much trust the mod team to, if there was something really bad happening, they'd let me know. Um, and our mod team is really good. They're on top of yeah. everything. Um, and they know, you know, when something goes too far and when to step in. So I do trust them 90% of the time. And I just, the other 10% like to check in myself. Um, I run raids for TSW as well, um, three times a week. Just uh, I call them for funsies, Iron Horse raids, because funsies is my word apparently. Um, so I, we, I run those, um, and that's just my way of keeping up with what's happening on Xbox, so that I'm able to talk to people, um, make sure everyone's okay, make sure if there's any problems that people you know haven't thought was a problem, but actually there's a problem that they can come to me and I'm approachable because they know me. So mm. it's, I'm not just like a, a picture on a screen. So <laughs> I try to make sure I keep doing raids and joining people. Um, uh, Dedicated. Yeah. So it, it just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things going on yeah. um, behind the scenes. So. There is. There is, and you even get up at four AM for like my raids. Yeah, that, that's that's more for my mentoring position. So, um, yeah, just with time zones, it's really hard being in Australia. Um, I'm so it's like twelve hours difference for a lot of people, and yeah. I'm in the team that I'm I'm doing. They're like some of them are in the Netherlands, and it's really hard to find a, a good time to help them. So. It's good to see it work with someone over in Australia. We had a lot of members in the past that have struggled with the server because of the time zone, and it's good to see someone that has made it work. So time zone is an issue, isn't it? Like it's a big time difference. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I'm lucky. Like I don't like my real life job. I don't really work on the weekends, so I, I can play on the weekends. So I make it work that way. Yeah. But even like my my raids during the week, there. They're people's morning, so people that you know have a slow start or work night shift or something, they can often jump into those as well. So yeah, you make it work if you want to do it. You make it work. So. Yeah, 
and you have yeah. done so yeah well, what is your favorite part of this community and what advice would you give to any new members that join us so my favorite part is probably the connections i've made with people um so i've met people from all around the world um and everybody i've kind of spoken to everyone i've played with in whatever way it's been you know bring something new unique and interesting and have something different to offer the community so we're, we're really we're generally a really positive place and we don't the people here don't um hold anything against people like the way they you know people with mental illnesses or you know we often take uh, people with hearing difficulties through raids mm -hmm. and you know we don't discord people just because they may be different yeah. so i think that's something that we do really well here and my advice for new members is really just to be patient so we have so many people here that want to help mm. but we also have real jobs so Definitely. you know like i know a lot of people really want to get into raids and people really want to get into you know grinding for builds and things and they can get really frustrated and leave within a couple of days and i guess my advice to to them is be patient. We're, we're going to help you in, as soon as we can. Um, but yeah, just be patient and you'll realize what an amazing place this is. So, yeah. yeah. And like you, they'll be able to find those connections. I think that's something the community does very well because of what you said was so inclusive. People can be themselves. They don't need to feel like they're threatened or anything like that. And they can meet friends yeah. then that match them. And, you know, people meet friends for life from the community and it, it's great to see. Yeah. And yeah, be yeah. patient. It's not just about doing a raid, is it? Yeah. That's great. We're going to move away from the Discord now because a lot of people are probably going to want to know more about you. So I'm sure loads of them already do as well because you've played with so many. But can you tell us more about the person behind the Discord handle and gamer tags and just share anything you like, really? Um. Well, firstly, surprise, I'm female, just in case you weren't you know, wondering. <laughs> um, so I, I am South African. So I was born in South Africa and I lived in New Zealand for a little while. Um, now I live in Australia, so my accent kind of is all over the place. Um, you can tell how I'm feeling by how strong each of the accents are, pretty much. Um, I often say it's a bit like a box of chocolates because you never know what you're going to get. Um, a lot of people know I'm a teacher probably because I've used teacher voice on them a few times. Not on purpose, I don't mean to. Um, I, I, this year I'm teaching nine and, not, but they were between nine and 11 years old and like I love teaching, um, it's my passion. I've been doing it for 17 years now, so um, it's a long time to do a job like teaching because it's very, very stressful. Very demanding, but, isn't um, it? I love, yeah, I love the time I'm with the students. Um, I get lots of stories and like I've got one child who forgets his name some days, um, just forgets it. And one day he glued a piece of paper to the floor and I was like, great, this is, this is a wonderful start to the day. And I've got other stories that are not appropriate for here, but um, yeah, like there's, there's so much and every day is kind of different. Um, I, I have a really cute cat. His name is Thor. Anyone who plays with me often hears me talking to him. He's like a bit of a snuggler, so he kind of um, gets really close. He's, he's a really big cat. He's not, I, I, I'm going to, it sounds terrible, but the vet said he's not fat. <laughs> so um, he's on diet food. <laughs> so it sounds terrible. I swear, I, I'm not, I, I love my cat. I do look after him. But he's like eight kilos, <laughs> like he's just a big cat. And um, when I'm playing, he often snuggles really close, but he'll like put his hand on my controller. And so I'll be shooting things without meaning to shoot things. And yeah, so he even plays. Um, I play a lot of tennis myself and um, I love reading. Um, I love going to the beach and just being outdoors. Um, and one of my, I guess, Secret talents, I guess it is, is um, I love to decorate cakes. So um, not a lot of people know. I think the mods do because I've shown them pictures of it. But, um, yeah, I decorate cakes and make them really pretty and fancy. And, yeah, I my creative outlet because I'm not very good at drawing and things like that. But making a cake is 
is um that's why you get your creativity out of your cake baking yeah yeah um and also i became an auntie for the first time so that's very special to me at the moment through yeah. a little um a little boy named Hudson. so yeah congratulations again that's a little bit about me yeah i think <laughs> that's great <coughs> oh excuse me sorry so continuing on move away from discord and uh moving on to gaming then it's obviously a shared interest between all of our members we all game how, mm-hmm. how long have you been gaming for and can you now take us on a journey through your gaming life sure um so i started gaming a long time ago um it's a bit of a sad story but it does get better um so like i'm here now so when i was about 12 years old um, we used to visit my grandparents every kind of second weekend and my aunt lived there with two of my cousins and one of my cousins was 19 years old so he was a lot older than me and he hated me kind of coming into his room and touching his Lego and touching his stuff in his room but he'd be happy for me just to sit and watch him playing games on his computer and um, he always played Diablo so um, I would always sit there and I'd be playing Lego, I'm uh, not playing Lego, I'd be watching him play and annoying him as a 12 year old does and like throwing stuff at him <laughs> and then he'd yell at me and carry on with his game but um about four years later after you know four years later he actually um was killed in a by a drunk driver oh, um no. just before we moved to new zealand so for me when i finally had my own pc um my way of kind of connecting with him was playing Diablo myself. So that was the first game I ever played. Um, and obviously my parents wouldn't let me play it till I was a bit older anyway. Um, after that, I kind of started branching out to StarCraft and then I had a, play, a PlayStation. And please do not judge me here, but I used to play Star and Fire. And so I'm not going to sing to you because that'll just break everyone's ears. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I used to play those games. And then my sister had an Xbox um, at the same time, and we used to play Halo together and Fable and Mortal Kombat. Um, so those are the games we played. And then I don't know, I don't know if they still do it now, but when I was a teenager, I used to do the all-nighters at the um, internet cafe. I used to play COD on the computer on the computers there. So um, my friends and I used to do that. And then I finally got my own Xbox uh, when I finished uni, and then I started playing Diablo again. And I got really sick at one point. I had to have like four surgeries in the year and I couldn't really do a lot mm. because of it. And if it wasn't for my Xbox and The Witcher 3, I, if, I probably would have gone crazy because I was so bored. Um, so I played a lot of that. Um, also played some games on my phone. One of them is Puzzles and Survival. It's, it's just one of those mindless games that you play, but I was in a lot well, I am in an, in an alliance. And there were three people, MJ, Triple Chocolate Cake, and someone named Paul, and they convinced me to come and try Division 2. And um, so I jumped on with them, and then I played with them, and I just really loved loved the game. And they kind of um, taught me the beginnings of my love for Division, and they introduced me to other people that played and kind of grew from there. Um, I also played COD with them as well. So MJ and I, our favorite thing to do on COD is drive the vehicle. And we're so, so, so good at blowing those vehicles up. Um, our best, best one was the time we blew up a tank that we were driving. Um, so needless to say, after that, we were never trusted to drive together again. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of the games I've played. I took a bit of a break before joining this Discord as well from Division. After everything that had happened, mm. I was like, I just need a break from the game. And I played a lot of Destiny with someone called Royal Spiner. Um, he's someone that I got to know really, really well during that time. And he became a really good friend as well. Um, and he also plays Division sometimes. He used to do speed runs um, in his clan. So he taught me a lot as well because he would jump on with Division with me. And we would, he's Australian, so we got to play together on the same time zone. Um, so no 4am raids with him. 
which was nice. Um, and yeah, now I'm here and this weekend I'm playing the Diablo 4 beta. I was going to so say we'd be getting on that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, I jumped on with Reap and Gunslinger and Omega. So yeah, we had a lot of fun. I've never played a Diablo, but I am tempted. I haven't got time this weekend, but I am tempted. But when is the main game out? Do we know? I, I think it's like June or it's, it's it's quite late, but next weekend is the open beta. Okay. So today was just early, or this weekend is early access. Yeah. And then, yeah, next week I think is open beta. So. Struggling to get off Destiny yeah. right now as well. So you said you, you played Destiny 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at it. I hate jumping. Oh, no, right? <laughs> I hate anything to do with jumping. <laughs> it's like, it's like first person shooter meets Sonic the Hedgehog. It's yeah. just not right. <laughs> it's just <Yeah>. not right. <laughs> That's an incredible story, especially how you got into gaming as well. I bet you still, I don't know, to this day, that still has an impact. So it's sad to hear, but yeah. something that you take with you. Um, but yeah, um, if there was one game, so you mentioned a lot of games that you played there. If there was one game that you mm-hmm. had to choose as the best game that you ever played, what is it and why? So probably Diablo, um, just because of the connection Mm. to me. Um, And when I play it, it's kind of like brings me closer to my cousin. And it's kind of like instead of me throwing Lego at him, he's throwing the Lego at me now. So, yeah, I just um, that's a game that even if they made it like the worst version of it in the world, I'd probably still play it. So, yeah. 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 So we're going to move back to Discord stuff now. We're getting to the end of the questions now. Um, And I ask everybody in the member spotlight about the Discord handle. So Apocalypse1790. Where did your Discord handle come from? What's the meaning? Um, It's not not a very good story. (laughs) I wish I had this amazing story to tell people. But when I originally joined Discord, my name was Western, which it was like, because I live in Western Australia and I'm really into like supernatural kind of books and shows and stuff like that. So, and it's also, you know, like alliteration, my teacher brain, WW, it was great. So it all fits for me. Um, But then when I joined it, I joined um, this Discord. I was like, hang on, I should probably put it to what my Xbox name is. So then I changed it. Um, on Xbox, I originally just had a random name, like East Turtle or something ridiculous like that. And then I was like, I need to think of a better name and I need to think of something that's really cool, you know? Mm. And um, I was sitting watching Supernatural, the TV show, at one night and they were um, facing another apocalypse, the two brothers. And then I was like, oh my gosh, apocalypse has never quit. So I was like, yeah, that's going to be my name from now on. Mm-hmm. And the number has no meaning. Um, it was just the number that was available, pretty much. Yeah, so, kind of what they yeah. suggest here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next question then. Um, mm-hmm. If you were head admin for a day, what changes would you make to this community? So, yeah. Um, probably like free snacks for everyone is like that how you get votes to be head of something <laughs> no, no no i'm kidding so um so i think one of the biggest things i would probably be interested in doing is looking at a way to have more cross-platform integration so um i know that there's no cross play but i i still think that we are sometimes quite segregated and it would be really nice to see more interaction between all three platforms um so like an event um that might you know like your time trials you could have um you know pairs from each platform there six people come together and then they average their time so it's like a a group effort to be your time um or like we could have a you know clans kind of xp battle where you know one clan from each platform they join up and it could be like a mega XP war or something just to get everybody, you know, talking more and joining in more. I, I just, I think that it's, sometimes we're a little bit segregated. So it'd be nice just to 
have a little bit more um, unity, I guess. Yeah. Funny you say that because it's something I've noticed in the last 12 months is um, you've mentioned it during this spotlight earlier on as well is I've noticed that when we do get engaged with the community they, they love it so even yeah. something as simple as those time trials like not everybody it's not for everybody or whatnot but they, they love it they love that engagement people might not be yeah. playing a division two right now but I'll put those tra time trials out and again together to beat the times so having fun around it and there's been other instances yeah. and you mentioned one earlier i forgot what you said now but when you i think it's the xp battle and when you put that xp battle out people were interested they were getting involved and they, yeah. they enjoyed it and i've yeah. it's something that we're really working on in the background and when well i am yeah. and we're going to be having a lot more events so i'm hoping when yeah. that it'll be my yeah. idea is monthly events so yeah. Every month there'll be something. Again, each event might not be for everybody, but hopefully there'll be mm. enough of a variant as the months go on and new ideas come in that they'll just get people involved. Doesn't matter what platform you're on, you can get involved as well. And hopefully mm. it works towards that. I heard um a lot of people um the summer raid event last year that you did, and a lot of people um will actually ask me is there any plans to do more, like another one? Um, because a lot of the people that um, are raiding now, that was around the time that their, it was their FTC kind of time. They were new, like new to the server and they were kind of helping us in the challenge to try and get them exotics and things like that. And they're all asking now, like, is there going to be another one? Because I, I, and I'm just like, oh, I don't know. You'll just have to wait and see. And yeah, I don't know. People really love doing those types of things. They're, they're I do have one more thing I would do mm. if I was head admin. Go on. Um, and it's really, um, <laughs> it's 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 more like to try and get more of the community being able to sign up to raid. So, like we have the LFG bot at the moment, and at the moment it's it's only open for TSW. So, opening it up to the full community would just allow people to be able to sign up instead of having to, you know, be on their phone the whole time waiting to be able to sign up to or put their name down as soon as someone posted. So having that ability to sign up to a raid a few days in advance, knowing that they've got that security, like I'm going to have my raid, mm. um, I just think would be a bit better than just having it for one group of people. So explain so, how yeah, the bot works. Can anybody set up raids on the bot or do these be our uh, shade team to set up so raids? There's, there's a shade team bot. There's a shade team bot that shade teams will sign up to and it's just, um, you know, people with shade status see those ones. And then in the LFG section, there's the um, Xbox LFG bot and that bot is only TSW people can see it. So, so your you know, recommendation was to make that public? Yeah, just yeah. so more people, there's a lot of people asking to do raids and they miss out. Um, like the raids I said, always have a position for FTCs, um, but that FTC position doesn't always get filled. So having that opportunity, maybe it's someone like me, you know, when I first started, I was a bit shy. Um, maybe having that opportunity to sign up mm. rather than be brave and, you know, go when someone takes me. Um, might be good for some people yeah so, no definitely i made note of yeah. that because one of the again lots of changes going on in the background i mean a revamping discord's going to have a big maintenance again soon so um one of the things yeah. that i decided which people have seen with the tsw youtube channel is that it's no longer a clan channel it's now the gc rock community channel we are we will we'll go more community focused we always have been community focused but we've had you know we at the same time we've had the clan that we've kind of like separated whereas now we what we still have tsw very proud of it but we're also more proud of our community and everybody so yeah. maybe that is something i actually yeah. agree with you i think that's something that probably should happen so we'll look at that in future changes for sure this is why we asked this question <laughs> because yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know your, your ideas count and it might be something we miss or we like me i don't get involved in any of the bots so that's certainly something i'd miss i, I don't even know how it works yeah. but for people that use it it's it's very that'd be very ideal. Is there anything else you do as head admin, or is that the two? Um, I guess 
what I would also like to see is just the admin team and the mod team and clan commanders and lieutenants just being a little bit more active and showing people that they're, you know, people too, um, you know, joining joining people's raids more or joining people's groups. And I know everybody's got things on their plate and they've got yeah. um, real life as well. But it just would be nice to see more of those, all those different teams just being active within the community a little bit more. So that would be my only other thing I would like to see more of. Okay. Um, yeah. Two seconds. Make it another note because you just gave me an idea. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Um okay, I think we're up to the last question, which is a bit of a fun one. This is just fun and no hard feelings. Okay. So if you were to be stranded on a desert island where you could choose three members of the community to take with you, a game and one meal for the rest of your life, what and who would they be? Um Three is really hard because I could probably fill the whole island with yeah. the people I would take. <laughs> so restricting it to three is very tricky. Um, I would probably bring Jada. Um, he's probably the most patient person I've ever met. I have, you know, a lot of eccentricities um, that Jada sometimes has to put up with because I message him and he always makes time for me and values what I have to say. Um, so I, I would. I would want to bring him. Um, I would definitely bring Reap. He's probably the person I'm closest to on Xbox. Um, he's such a kind and generous person. Um, he's funny and he's also really supportive, so I couldn't leave him behind. And lastly, probably um, Stretchy. Stretchy. Um, because we need someone that's there to be just adequate on the island. So, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. He'll get it. He'll get it. Um, <laughs> he's. I think in that kind of situation, we're going to need the humor that comes with stretchy and stretchy story time. And I think he's pretty good with his hands. So maybe he could go like forage for berries while the rest of us build the shelter and start the fire and everything. So that would be useful for us, I think. Um, my one meal. Uh, my favorite is macaroni and cheese, but it's not like packet ma macaroni and cheese or from a box. I love it from scratch with like delicious cheesy roux sauce and bacon and you know the pasta is like swimming in the sauce and it's just amazing <laughs> and then I probably have like a side salad because my mum would probably still kill me at my age if I didn't at least have some green so <laughs> macaroni and cheese with a side salad um and then as a game probably something like a pack of cards because okay. you can do a lot with that you can play Play rummy, play canasta. You can make, you know, towers, card towers. Um, so many things. Snap, go fish, all of those games. So it'll be like hours of entertainment, I think. Clever um, answer. So yeah. Clever. So. And you're not gonna, cards. yeah. You're not gonna have electricity, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. I'll... Yeah, and it's okay because if anything was to happen on the island, we could just say it's Gunslinger's fault, and then everything would be fine. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> Constantly. Uh, I like it. He's gonna hate me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always fun raiding. Yeah, uh, we need to set up another raid again soon. Yeah. Get Gunslinger in, even if he's not in LB as fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So that's that's the end of the spotlight. Um, it's been great. Again, with you learning more about you, I think it's been a great spotlight, and you've shown shown the community a lot of like what goes on behind the scenes. I figure what you spoke about today of how hard you've worked to get into the role you are. You're not just handed out these roles; it's so hard when we have to give these roles out because so many people do so much. But obviously, you're well deserving of where you are in the community. I can't thank you enough for what you do. Um, it's thank been you. great getting yeah. to know you. Is there any fine? Is there any final words for the community before we end the spotlight? Um, I guess it sounds really cheesy, but I truly do mean it. Like just keep being the amazing people that we are. So I've heard so many stories from so many different people and different walks of life and all the different things that people have gone through. And one thing that always comes out is how TSW is their kind of safe place, safe place 
Um, it's a place where they can be themselves, where they feel accepted. And I think a lot of us don't realize the difference we're making when we um, encourage somebody to keep trying when they're really struggling on a, on a mission or, you know, giving them 20 minutes of your time to jump in and help them with a mission. Um, and you just have to look at the kudos page to see how many people are helping in our community. And I think that, yeah, everyone is just really awesome. Yeah, we all make a difference, and I don't think people realize that. They don't realize. Every single person, no matter how small, we're all making a difference of some kind with people. No, 100%. It's important we keep that up, isn't it? Yeah. Which is why I wrote one of my notes down. But yeah, it's it's, (laughs) it's simple. Like, I had a message on YouTube the other day, like, you just don't think about what a difference you make, even if it's just that 20 minutes. Even when you stream, like, you stream yourself as well on your channel showing the great mm-hmm. work that we do but just having a laugh showing that the gaming space isn't as toxic as other communities make it out to be and yeah it, it makes a huge difference it gives people confidence as people that come into the community like yourself you were very nervous to begin with and now you're you're the upper's admin people come in i think i can mention um savvy there's a few others a lot of female gamers to be fair but even males they come in and they haven't got the yeah. confidence and then within a few months to a year within this community they're leading their own raid team they're having the best time in a life in gaming and they're really enjoying the gaming life and yeah it's something this community does and i'm glad that it's still the point is very important we keep that going so i couldn't agree more with you yeah yeah keep making I a think you've built, you've built a really special place for people so Thank you as well. Well, we have now. It's an us thing for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we keep it going. I, my job's just the yeah. growth side of it. i got to keep growing it now. I'm, we just got to keep it as it is. So thank you for being a big part of it, Apocalypse. Yeah, no worries. I love it. <laughs>